Okay, this is Duncan Fawler and uh, this is a tutorial carrying on from uh, uh, the previous one which uh, showed you how to import a SCAR robot, set the scene up and create a, um, a magnetic uh, gripper. And what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to set up the, the gripper so it actually works within the software uh, you don't actually have to do this uh, for the for the actual robot but we want to um, actually see see the robot pick an object up and move it from a to b so um in the software so we're going to have to set up a device configuration uh, and uh, we're going to change the settings uh, so it's going to be magnetic and uh, when the uh, the the disc that we 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 consider as a gripper comes within 25 millimeters of an object that is a part uh, we'll talk about that in a bit and um, it can pick it up if it's further away than 25 millimeters and you say open or close gripper or switch on the magnetic a gripper and it's further away it can't pick it up so uh, we've got that that to solve and so we're going to create a small object 50 by 50 by 10 uh, square and place it on the tabletop and uh, we're going to change it to a part so this is just placing it on the top uh, we're going to change the code just a little so we're just going to add um, an open gripper or, uh, every time we run the loop make sure the gripper is open or the magnetic um, uh, the magnet is switched off and then we're going to cl close so that's the only two commands we're really uh, introducing to an open and a close uh, gripper uh, and then we'll run the simulation and hopefully that will uh, pick pick the little box the little box up and um, move it to a new position that's all it's going to do we're just going to pick it up and, and move it and stuff okay let's move over to um the stable software okay we've moved to this new camera position let's select the uh, uh the gripper and uh, right click and we're going to uh, device configuration click on the plus sign here and we need to click on the no triggers and we need to go to the um, the user input output digital outputs valve one so valve one uh, with uh, the stable is uh, always connected to the uh, the tool and it's already picked up the tool name and um, so when that becomes true it will switch on and a false it will switch and once you've done that, just uh, close the window. Oh, it's not saved. Let's do that again. And then say OK. And we get the device configuration set up here, uh, which just uh, change the handle. It's on magnetic. Uh, we're going to change this to 25. And the time we need to just increase that. Actually, it's in milliseconds, so let's change it to 100 and 100. Okay, so uh, we can just go back to tabs. Everything's uh, set now, so we can. We need to create an object. So let's go to the modeling. Uh, do uh, we're going to do a small box? So there it is. Click on it in the properties window. Eventually, it'll catch up. There we go. Let's uh, just give us some space on there. Um, let's give this a value of 50. 50. 10. Uh, we'll give it a color of something like red. Uh, yeah, it'll stand out on the blue tabletop. I'm just going to move it to the side so I can see it. 
There it is. It's green because it's selected. Let's uh, right click on it. Actually, we just tell it it's a part at the moment. Yeah. And now it's so now it thinks it's a part. The robot can only pick parts up. And you can see, um, I'll just do edit position. You can actually see in the tree that we've now got uh, geometry robots, tools, and parts. And uh, if we can expand this, you'll see that it's. Uh, Let's go subset again. There we go. It's a, a part that's made up of a box. It's called box two, and it's got a handle. And we need to make sure uh, the handle will be at the top, so we, uh, we should be okay with that. Uh, let's move the absolute position to um, two three seven dot seven. At another non pretty number one. 22.63. I'm just putting it on the tabletop basically. Um, 262.06. There it is. So it's now on the tabletop. And what we should find if we go to the, I'll just reduce this down again, we don't need it. Go to the geometry tab, and if we go to peep, uh, position one, right click and say move to. Uh, that's directly above it. I'm going to uh, send it to J start now. Move to. Okay. Now what we need to do is switch the um, the gripper on. So let's go to the start program. And we're just going to. It, you can carry. Leave it to ten. Um, 10 loops, it doesn't really matter. It's only going to do this once. Uh, but we, if you start typing open, you get the option with two brackets. And it's asking what you want to open. We want to open a tool. I, I know it says open and for a magnetic sort of thing, it's sort of switching it on and off, but it, uh, you sort of get the idea. Uh, so we're going to open, pick it up at, at position one, go to, uh, long, go to position two. Um, when it's got down to position two, um, okay, so we've uh, put the open, uh, so we want the gripper to be open, um, and then uh, it goes to start, goes to pick up approach, then goes down to pick up approach, and we want uh, it to close, and we know it's T tool. And it's probably better to put a weight and move here, um, because we want it to not, we want it to physically switch on the magnet. And do nothing until the magnet is that command on line nine has been completed. So we'll put a weight and move in there before it moves off uh, to uh, down there. Um, in truth, uh, these should really be uh, move L's. Let's move them, change them to move L's. Okay. They're more linear movements, um, so straight line rather than a curve. Uh, I kind of prefer these because uh, you know uh, where you're starting from you know where you're finishing um actually the, the last one is a j so you need to stay as a j uh but you, you know where you're starting from p pick and you're moving to p pick approach and you want to do it in a straight line okay let's well, just okay that uh let's go to vowel three let's check uh everything is okay with that um i've got no errors And let's run the program. So all what's going to happen is going to go here, pick that box up, and it's going to uh, put it over here to uh, point 0.2, and then it'll carry on with what it was doing for 10 times. So uh, in fact, it might slightly mess up and the next time it comes around just because the way the software works. Um, but what? just before we, we start the uh, simulation, um, you need to save initial positions. Because obviously, when I pick this little box up and move it to position 2, uh, when the program's finished, the box is at position two. I want to bring it back to the beginning again. So this save all initial option uh, positions to just make sure that all parts, oh, if I, when I reset, will jump back into that position. So let's just click on the controller uh, and get the uh, the emulator up and running. Another th problem with this software is that if you run it very fast, 
it sometimes doesn't pick up uh, the boxes and stuff. So I recommend you, uh, you run the first time round at something like five or 10. Uh, I'm gonna press return, and return for VAL3, uh, right click and loop. i switch the simulation on. There we go, I'm going to get the emulator again. Um, it's on the second one along, I don't have to press uh, this button. Let's power it up, uh, run. Yes, I do want to run that, so okay. And press move, it comes, goes to the box, picks the box up, uh, puts it down over there. Oh, it's not working, so we're running a bit fast. Um, Let's put it, put it in the wrong place. So let's uh, stop that. Okay. Um, should be able to reset, yes. What I'm gonna do, just make sure I put that uh, code in the right place. It's okay. I'm gonna get an error message from the simulator, I think. Um, actually, open the gripper, close the gripper. Oh, I've, and then I need to open the gripper again, obviously don't. I've opened the gripper there, I've closed the gripper, so I've picked it up at point one, and I've not dropped it off at point two, so I need to um, open the gripper again, obviously. Open. T, tool. And wait. And move. And then go back up. So let's try that again. Uh, reset position. Oh, so stop it running, it's still running in the background, so okay. Okay. Um, I've changed the program, so it's best to completely switch off the emulator. Um, let's save everything. Okay, so let's go back to the, um, the, con uh, the simulator. What's just happened is actually uh, they, uh, this software completely crashed on me. Uh, that's why it's a really good practice to keep saving your work and stuff. Um, right, let's uh, switch simulation on. Go to the back to the emulator. Switch power on. Uh, I want the application to run, the Val3 to run. I'll go and find my application. There it is. Uh, run. Yes. And then press move. And the rotor vault moves over, hopefully to pick it up this time, which it, it did before, but now I've put um asked it to let go as well. And there you go. So um it will carry on doing the uh, the ten, it might actually mess up if you actually um uh, uh, yeah, it struggles when I move things. Um, as, you, as you watch it going round, you can actually see the distance appearing up here, the top right of the screen. Uh, it's stalled a bit now. Uh, that's how far it is away from an object. Um, and remember, we set in the direct device configuration that anything within 25 millimeters would work. So um, let's stop, stop it. And switch the simulation off. Um, so what we did there is we introduced an object, we changed it to a part. Uh, the handle was already at the top, so we didn't have to move it, but you've got to be uh, prepared to mess around with the handle um, of the part as well. Uh, we also looked at the uh, the cylinder, which was the um, magnetic um, tool, and we uh, set the device up. Uh, so. Uh, and then we use the open and close uh, command in the software. Okay, hopefully that was useful to you. Thanks a lot for listening.